In this episode, I wanted to talk to you about the retro synth instrument plugin that comes standard with Logic Pro. Um, it's pretty amazing. So let's just go over the layout and we'll kind of go through each section and hear some sounds. So I think it sounds great. There are four sections in the retro synth. There are four tabs right up here. So you essentially have four different synthesizers in one. That's exciting in and of itself. So the first mode is this analog mode and that's really trying to recreate like a Moog style sound from the 70s. Um, you have sync, which is an extension of the analog section, which is an oscillator sync section, which will get you some kind of famous sounds from like Gary Newman or the cars or stuff like that. You've heard the sound before. This is a wavetable synth, so this is an entirely different source for your sounds. So it is not pulling from your standard wave shapes, this is a wave table. We'll go over this in more detail later. We might need to do an individual one on each of these. Um, it also has an FM synth section so that's going to be like the Yamaha DX7 um, digital FM synthesis so very unique sound coming from there let's start in the analog section. The first section over here is the oscillator section. And you can see that we have two oscillators. We have oscillator one, oscillator two. This is the mixer, so if you have the knob all the way towards oscillator one, we're only hearing that. And if you have it all the way to oscillator two, we're only hearing that. So if you put it in the center, and I use my little display up here. It says 0.5, so I'm right in the middle. That means we have equal parts from oscillator one and oscillator two. This comes in handy if you wanna blend these different wave shapes over here to create more complex sounds or more unique sounds. So let's go through the wave shapes present in oscillator one. So we have a saw right here that sounds like this. We have a square wave that sounds like this. And if we go through this range, this is called the pulse width modulation and that is a common sound that you've probably heard before. And you can tell by the shape here, it's moving the divisions between the peaks and the valleys of the wave. So all the way to this extreme, you can see it's kind of cheating left. Um, and this is every space in between. So you can actually create movement in this area using the LFO and we'll talk about how to do that in a bit. But okay, so that's the saw in the square. Let's go to the noise generator. It sounds like this. Cool, so that's what noise generation sounds like. Never heard that. Um, okay, now let's go over to oscillator two. It's basically the same. We still have the same square here, same pulse width, and we have the same saw. Um, the difference is we have this triangle wave. Sounds like that. So triangles are cool. 
So they're a little bit softer, so they work really well for bass tones. Um, they also work really well for kind of percussive sounds. Um, whereas the saw and the square have a little bit more bite to them. Um, so just kind of different qualities to the sounds. The more that you play with them, you start to learn what each wave sounds like. So over here we have the shape modulation control. And so what that means is with any synth, you have the wave itself and then basically every other parameter is going to affect that wave. So when we say modulation, it just means we're taking another waveform or some other aspect of the synth that we're going to affect that original wave and make the sound more complex, more unique, more suited to some type of use that we want to use it in. With shape modulation, that's really referring to this pulse width section. So you can actually have this knob travel, travel essentially on its own if you use the LFO, which is this section down here, or if you use the filter envelope. These are both modulation sources and they'll affect the shape of the wave in real time as you play it. A vibrato control is basically um, a pitch differential. It's usually done over the scale of an octave. So if you have uh, an octave is 12 tones, so it would be from minus 12 to positive 12. That would be two octaves all the way. Um, this is actually telling you the amount of semitones here. So this actually goes to 36 semitones, which is three octaves. Um, so that's a more dramatic effect. The, if you dial this down, it's not as extreme. So this is kind of acting as a depth control for the vibrato. And the vibrato has its own control down in this section as well that we can adjust here. So I'll get to that in a moment. Um, this here, the semitones control, so this allows you to actually change the relationship of the pitch of oscillator 2 to oscillator 1. So I can demonstrate this for you. Um, if you put it in the center, and I leave the semitones at the center, and let's even make the waveforms the same, that means if I play, let's say, a C, they're both going to play exactly a C. If I put this at 12 semitones, it's going to be an octave up of the C. So I can show you how this works in real time. So let's say if I'm playing a C here, I hold it down. Now as I turn this semitone knob, you're going to hear oscillator 2 move up by a semitone. and it goes all the way up to two octaves. You can also go two octaves below. So that's some pretty intense sub right there. So that's a cool feature. Two octaves up and down on top of the original note you're playing. So that means you can create uh, kind of uh, interval relationships. So you could play a fourth You can play a fifth. And you can play a seventh. Cool. So when you see sense, sense refers to very fine tuning of pitch. So this will allow you to get kind of a detune sound, which is kind of like a wavy, um, you know, kind of an old school VHS wavy sound. So let's, let's try that. Play a C, and now I'll start to move the sense. 
So really what you're doing is detuning the second oscillator by a very small degree, but that creates this kind of wavy or sound. It takes up more space in the stereo spectrum too. It kind of fills uh, your speakers a little bit more. So um, this is what it sounds like here. Pretty good detuned sound and you can go all the way. It's obviously a lot more of an extreme sound. So yeah, that's the oscillator section. Um, and here's the mixer. Again, you can isolate oscillator one completely or isolate oscillator two completely or have any blend in between. It's pretty standard on hardware synths too with two oscillators. You see this setup a lot. 